Greetings, faithful followers. This is your old pal, Brother Jack Angry, bringing you the another edition of the Angry Brothers Omaha Chakorama Movie Night Live from the Monastery of Mayhem, along with myself and our sidekick, uh, Brother Reggie, here. Um, everybody else is, is working. I mean, James is working. Uh, Inferna is still doing some work for Down Below. Uh, Lady Tord is down in the dungeon torturing her her minions I think uh, you know Ash and Sin are doing their thing I I don't know it's like everybody's kind of gone in different directions I mean it's like the winter months everybody's kind of bored you know we're all stuck inside so you know the, the, these things happen so it's me and Reggie running the show tonight today to bring you the, some of the best and some of the bad movies of the from the 20s through the 80s and, and beyond you know, we take our jobs very seriously here at the Angry Brothers Omaha Shakarama. I mean, I'm sitting here wearing a black robe. I'm a zombie with big skeleton hands. I'm sitting here with a skeleton on the uh, on the comfy couch of mayhem. And I mean, can't you tell I take my job seriously? I mean, seriously, come on. It's like who wouldn't take this job seriously? I would. But then again, some people say I have mental problems. Do you, do, do you think I have mental problems, Reggie? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Hello? Hmm. It's like, I'm going to have to keep an eye on Brother Reggie here. Uh, you know, it's like, either you're with me or against me, Reggie. Anyway, we, we have a couple of things. We have some things in mind to deal with Brother Reggie. And uh, we're also going to be dealing with uh, that uh, squatter next door, Dr. Smallberries. You know, it's like every every time I turn around, I get up and I fart too loud, and I hear him yelling about the noise, and you know that we use too much hot water, and you know we're use not you know, we're not paying the electric bill on time, so it's causing his experiments to fuck up, and you know I'm really beginning to regret renting out the uh, east wing of the monastery to him to do his experiments with. I've got to check the renters' agreement, see if there's any way I can get rid of him. You know, I can think of. Uh, one way right off the bat but you know that's going to be kind of messy and you know and then there's that whole uh, thing of getting rid of a body but i've been watching breaking bad so i know how to do it and i know just exactly where to get the big plastic barrel and the hydrofluoric acid so you know if dr smallberries turns up missing one of these days you know it's like don't ask too many questions but that's a worry for another day. Right, Reg? Yes, right. Without a doubt, I mean, we could just set out some uh, peanut butter and a big trap and that would get him too because he'd fall for that because he ain't too bright, you know. I mean, look at that white outfit and the lab coat and the white shoes that he wears. It's like, I mean, who the hell wears white leather loafers anymore other than, you know, either you're an evangelist or a pimp. Let's face it. Anyhow, you know, that's enough of that idiot. So, um, tonight's movie is a is a, actually a very decent feature. It was the it is the People That Time Forgot, starring D uh, Patrick Wayne, the son of John Wayne, you know, the Duke. Um, boy, could we use him now. I mean, I mean really. I mean, with all these little um, camel republics and banana republics thumbing their nose at at this country, you know, and and all of our um, our aid workers being kidnapped, beheaded, burned, and what have you. I mean, we, we need a John Wayne to kind of go in there and kick ass, take names, and, you know, basically start, you know, knocking some people out from under their burkas, as it were, and their burnooses. Um, yeah, definitely. But, again, don't get me started on politics. It's going to get ugly real fast, people. But anyway, uh, tonight's movie, The People That Time Forgot, stars Patrick Wayne, Doug McClure, Sarah Douglas, a uh, very talented actress named Dana Gillespie, uh, who is a uh, quite an accomplished blues singer, uh, has many albums out, mostly popular in the UK, but she does have a small following here in the United States. Also was a former Olympic water skiing cha champion. And she uh, was involved with David Bowie as his romantic interest for a time. Uh, but those are some interesting stories. Uh, you know, 
very, very stunning woman. At least she was back in 1978 when this movie was done. And Sarah Douglas, who you would remember from uh, Superman, uh, Superman movie, uh, she played Ursa, and in Superman 2, uh, again, she's been in Babylon, or she's been in um, V, the series, uh, you know, a number of, number of great things, uh, great character actor, does a lot of voice work, particularly for uh, the uh, Batman animated series, the Superman animated series, the Justice League and Justice League Unlimited animated series. Um, I believe she did some work in the Gargoyles animated series, uh, any number of animated series. Great actress, really. Um, she's, been, she's quite popular at, con at conventions along with Margot Kidder and several others. Uh, like to see her in Omaha. I know she's been to Omaha a couple of times at uh, one comic books, uh, book station, uh, store who we really won't name, but anyway. Um, the film covers a British expeditionary force led by Patrick Wayne, uh, to, is going to this, uh, car, this continent, uh, hidden in the Arctic. It is actually a prehistoric jungle environment, and it is surrounded by ice cliffs, and so it's pretty much inaccessible except by air. Um, in the last movie, The Land That Time Forgot, they got there from underground in a submarine and they came up in a bay in the middle of this continent. Um, the purpose of the expedition is to find Bowen Tyler, played by Doug McClure, uh, who was left there, marooned there by the German U-boat crew at the, uh, at the end of the uh, last movie, which we will be bringing here uh, to you on the Angry Brothers Omaha Shockorama. The film goes on to uh, show their adventures in the search for Bo and Tyler. I mean, they meet, they encounter man-eating dinosaurs, uh, they encounter uh, bloodthirsty cavemen, and a race of uh, mutants that wear samurai armor and dress, and then they all talk like Alec Guinness, you know, from Star Wars. But, you know, not a, again, not a bad movie. We're gonna bring it to you right now. The People That Time Forgot here on the Angry Brothers Omaha Shockerama. Enjoy. That's human. Genuine cave girl. Mm. It'll suit you perfectly. She's all yours, Doc. You're the expert. In fossils, perhaps. But this is the last I might yield. Don't touch! She speaks English. It's crazy. No, it doesn't make sense. 
then, you see this knife she's carrying? Yeah, it's a Bowie knife. I don't know how the hell she got it. But yes, she, she must have been in, in contact with Tyler. Tyler? Good God. She knows the name. Is your name? Adjor. <sighs> Adjor, listen. Did Tyler teach you to speak our language? Yes. He teach you too? No. Tyler and me learn together. Grow up together. Tyler is a friend of mine. I guess he's a friend of yours too, huh? Was good man. All gone. Gone now. Adjur has no friends. No people. For that photograph of Tyler. Adjur. Go on. Take it. Your friend Tyler seems to have made quite an impression. Why don't you uh, go and light a fire or something? story. She comes from a race of people called the Galu. It's a Stone Age tribe, or at least it was when Tyler and a girl called Lisa stumbled into one of their settlements. Well, now, Lisa, wasn't that the girl that Tyler rescued? That's right, the only other survivor of the original party. Go on. Well, it appears that Tyler and the girl were welcomed by the Galu and lived with them for more than two years. That's somebody's friendly. During that time, they taught the Galoo farming skills and generally helped them advance from the Stone Age into the Iron Age. Well, greetings, faithful followers. What do you think of the uh, people that time forgot so far? Uh, you know, uh, what do you think of uh, Dana Gillespie running around in the little fur bikini and, you know, um, showing the, uh, the big, the big uh, fun bags and, you know, all the skin? It was, for the 80s, that was considered, for the late 70s, early 80s, that was considered pretty risque. Now, um, on a, uh, just to get off track a little bit, Dana Gillespie's singing career does span like 40 years, starting from the early 60s, uh, where she did mostly British pop. Uh, she was quite popular in the UK, Ireland, Wales, Scotland. Uh, she did spend a, a few years here in America doing the, touring the club circuit in San Francisco the 8 Ashbury District and some of the clubs in Los Angeles such as the Troubadour and Whiskey A Go Go. Um, her style of uh, Mississippi Delta and Mississippi Blues and some soft jazz and uh, fusion, uh, you know, did make her quite popular among the club circuit. Uh, she, this did lead to the release of several albums and many of these you can find on YouTube. Uh, you can, uh, she has since gone on to, um, she, and she does produce one of the, she did help organize one of the largest blues festivals in the UK. Um, the name of it escapes me, um, you know, and there's so much talent that comes out of the UK, I have to admit, uh, like John Barrowman, uh, Dana Gillespie is a multifaceted performer, uh, her, and she since, uh, followed, began, uh, she's a devotee of, uh, the Hindi uh, religion, 
um, under one of the uh, local Bagwans, whose name really does escape me at the moment. I couldn't pronounce it if I was reading it, but you know there are several videos on YouTube where she's singing at his birthday celebrations. Uh, she's singing uh, traditional Bollywood and Hindi tunes, but you know they're still a still a great listen anyway. Even if you can't understand what they're saying, still a very attractive woman. Um, you know, just one of those little uh, little bits of trivia you find going through the history on some of these films. Uh, she, I believe, also did some modeling in the UK, so very, very attractive woman. Now, Sarah Douglas, you know uh, from all of the myriad of TV work and voiceover work and animated shows and features. Uh, she played Ursa in Superman and Superman 2. Um, God, I really should know more about what she's done. I mean, I am such a fan. I mean, totally gorgeous woman. Um, love the accent, you know. It's like she could read her laundry. She could read her laundry list, and I, I'd still listen to that all day. Um, the movie also stars uh, 80s or 70s, 60s and 70s horror actors Shane Rimmer and Thorley Walters. Now, these two gentlemen were character actors, they were some of the backbones of a lot of the films produced by American International and Hammer. Um, uh, they went on to be play, they played mechanics, soldiers, doctors, anything you could imagine. They, one of these two guys has played. Um, Thorley Walters plays the, uh, the uh, Brit totally British scientist. Uh, and uh, Shane Rimmer, uh, at the end of the movie, is talking that he's going to take Azor, played by Danny Gillespie, home to uh, his home in Norfolk, Nebraska. It's like, where the hell did they pull that one out of? You know, it's like, uh, I almost fell off my chair when I heard that. And uh, she was saying, uh, no, no volcanoes? Not in Norfolk, no. I mean, it's like, unless things have changed since the last time I was there. But we're going to get back to the film the people that time forgot, here on the Angry Brothers Omaha Shakarama. Enjoy. Three, two, one, go. Ben, you go on ahead. I'll slow him down. Give you a chance to get through that cave. How are you going to stop him, with rocks? No dice, Bo. I didn't come all this way to leave you behind. What the hell, Ben? I'd buy it here, I'd buy it later. We make it away from the Nagas, but we'll never get home. Once we get to that amphib, we're home and dry. The land will stop you, Ben. It's alive. Well, greetings, faithful followers. This is your old pal, Brother Jack Angry. What did you think of uh, the people that time forgot so far? Uh, it wasn't a bad, wasn't a bad little film. I mean. It had all the necessary action, I mean, in suspense. I can remember the first time I saw this film was like, I did see it at the, yeah, I did see it at the theaters when it came out, but I think I was like about 10 or 11 years old, you know, and it was, was G-rated, so it was one of those films, you know, the, parent, the parental units would drop us off at the local uh, Cineplex and, you know, pick us up a couple hours later after they went and had coffee or they went and had a beer somewhere. And, you know, it was a nice way to, it was, uh, I recall I went with my brother and my fr uh, several of my friends in the neighborhood, you know, and, uh, you know, they had dinosaurs and volcanoes and sword fights and chicks with big boobs running around in little fur outfits and leather outfits and yada, yada, yada. So, I mean, it, it was a, it's a nice little childhood memory, you know, it takes me back to a, a simpler time when... You know, we didn't have all the problems and concerns and cares that we all have now as, you know, functional adults, you know, it's like, and uh, I question that term, you know, says the guy in the robe and, you know, the green, and uh, with the green face and the big skeleton hands here, you know, but still, not a bad movie. Um, it was worth the time I spent to watch it, brings back a lot of memories. Um, you know, and what are your childhood memories of movies like this? How do they make you feel? Do they uh, take you back to a more simpler time in your life? Maybe make you think of things that have gone by? Maybe think of a pet or a loved one that you might have lost or might not have around any longer? Uh, maybe a time in your life when, you know, things just seem to make more sense? 
you know, something to think about, something to ponder, people. You know, we're trying to be a little, we're a little introspective today. Uh, Patrick Wayne, as you know, went on to, to do a number of uh, great films. He was in the movie The Young, Gun, uh, Young Guns. He played Pat Garrett. Um, you know, uh, I believe he was in the movie Wrestler's Rhapsody. He played the uh, other villainous cowboy and yada, yada, yada. Um, you know, just a whole plethora of movies. And he's John Wayne's son. I mean, really, what more does he need to do? I, I figure he could get through the rest of his entire life just, Hi, I'm John Wayne's son. Now give me my appearance fee. You know, that's what I'd be doing. Um, but yeah, and speaking of, I, how many people out there, you know, let's see some hands. How many people, you know, really think we need John Ray, Wayne right now? You know, yeah, I kind of thought so. I see a lot of hands out there myself, you know. Um, yeah, it's like, we need people. We need people like the Duke, you know. I, I, with some of the shit that goes on in this uh, country, especially with this, all this ISIS crap, you'd think the Duke would just get right up out of his grave, put on his 10-gallon hat and his boots, and go kick some, kick some raghead ass, you know. It's like, or go kick some ISIS ass, you know. Uh, um, I, where, where are you, John Wayne? We need you. But anyway, you know, before I get too, uh, before I get out too on too big a rant, and has anybody noticed that the governor, our new governor, looks a hell of a lot like Lex Luthor? I mean, seriously, I saw him in the report about him and his family on the news. I'm looking at that and I'm thinking, damn, put a pair of, put some purple and green armor on him. He'd look just like fucking Lex Luthor, everybody. You know, it's like, hmm, I mean, does, it, does anybody think that bodes well for the state? Your governor looks like Lex Luthor, everybody. But anyway, it's like, that's, uh, that's going to be interesting to see how all this comes out. You know, it's like, ooh. But anyway, I didn't vote for him, so, you know, it's like, I take no responsibility, people. I didn't vote for anybody. No, I, I'm sorry, I did. I wrote myself in, you know. I voted for Mort Sullivan. You know, if you, if you listen to Pirate Radio, go to PirateRadio.com and look... And he's usually broadcasting about some cause or another. Uh, and his name is Mort Sullivan. So, you know, give him a listen. You know, either you're going to love him or you're going to hate him. That is, that's, you know, it's generally, it's a nice polar thing. You either love him or you hate him. You know, I wrote him in uh, in the last election because, damn it, we need, we need someone who is either one way or the other. Not these people that are right down the middle of the road. I hate the middle of the road. I end up driving there all the time, but I still hate it nonetheless. But anyhow, um, the movie, uh, the next movie that we're going to be bringing you, we're going to be doing a little kind of a theme for the next few weeks. We're going to be bringing you The Land That Time Forgot. Uh, this is also another uh, book written by Edgar Rice Burroughs. Uh, you, and The People That Time Forgot was a sequel that he wrote. These are actually short stories that Burroughs wrote towards the end of his career. Uh, after he, you know, garnered a lot of success and money on writing Tarzan and a few other things. Um, the, he wanted to do some short stories, and he actually wrote them under a pen name. Um, they were published under his pen name, which uh, escapes me, but after his death, his estate published them in a compendium of stories under his true name, Edgar Rice Burroughs, and that's how they're remembered today. Uh, I, before I go, I do want to take a moment here to uh, you know let everyone know about our GoFundMe campaign for Brother James. Uh, I guess uh, if you weren't here last week uh, when I explained I'll just uh, give you a brief explanation because uh, you know Brother James did uh, go to the dentist and he was diagnosed with extreme per pretty severe periodontal disease and because of this he is going to have to have all of his teeth pulled both uppers and lowers. Um, after we deduct what the discounts that we're willing that Aspen Dental is giving us, uh, and his what his insurance will cover, it still leaves us about three thousand dollars short. So I have started the GoFundMe campaign, and you'll be able to see the uh, address to that. Uh, we hope you will go to that and donate generously, uh, even if it's only a few bucks. Uh, every little bit helps, you know. And Brother James, if he were here, 
uh, he would thank you and I'll thank you. You know, it's like we do. You know, let's get him. Let's get him the help he needs. He's brought a lot of great shows to us. He's part of the family here at the Monastery of Mayhem. So let's all help him out if we can. And I'm directing this to my other horror hosts. I know you guys. I've seen it before. I know you guys can come together and help those in need. You've done it before. You know, we're just asking for everybody's... Uh, we're asking all of our fans, all of our friends, all of our fellow whore hosts, uh, even if you don't contribute anything, just send what good vibes and positive energy uh, that you can, you know, because we, we'll, we need everything we can get at this point. Well, until next time, faithful followers, from myself, Brother Reggie, Inferna, Brother James, uh, Lady Torrid, Gulia, Ash, and Sin, and everyone else in the uh, family here at the Monastery of Mayhem, good night, watch Whore Hosts, and let's keep America on top, y'all. Enjoy, and unpleasant dreams.